Hello guys and welcome back to a special video guide. Today we're talking about pumps and the high pressure secret coffee stains has been keeping rather quiet. Oh, well, okay, it's not a secret, but there is confusion when it comes to how many pumps you really need for running in a factory. So with a little bit of planning, you can get away with going from this kind of setup of pumps to in theory, a setup like this, but does it work? Well, you might be surprised. So if you do find this video helpful, please drop a thumbs up. And obviously, if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. So as you can see here, we have two setups. The right side is using pipe pumps and the left side is not. So when we hook up the system, the easy assumption to make would be that the right hand side will pump water to the top, whereas the left hand side would be stuck. Now, I will mention that these two sides are not connected in any way. The assumption that we've made is water extractors can only lift water 10 meters in head lift above their outputs and pumps push the liquids in the pipes a further 20 meters in height. So let's see what happens when we connect both these pipes to their pipe network. Interestingly, you can see that both sides of the factory are running despite one using a pump and the other not. Looking at the pipes, both of them are full of water. And also note how they seem to be running at pretty much the exact same speed, suggesting other than a slight lag due to me setting up the pipes, that both pipes are running full. Now, I do actually owe this discovery partly in thanks to Felix Bertoni when he mentioned the science behind head lift in one of our comments, and so I decided to test it out. Now at first, I placed a water extractor on a mountain lake, then brought the water down into a ravine to see if this can then lift the water back up to its current height. Apparently, it can. Now furthering this, I figured if you place a pump after the extractor at the top of the mountain lake, you could drop the water to the bottom, then raise it 20 meters above the extractor's head lift. So with that in mind, I decided to use one extractor at the top, then attach it to two water extractors at the bottom to fill the pipes. And from there, I wanted to see if we could still lift that water up. And I was surprised to say it could. And even if you split the water from the higher extractor between multiple lower pipes, the same lift occurs in the pipes meaning you could split a single extractor from a great height into many other pipes and you could then fill those pipes up with other water extractors and export all the water by pipe back up to the same height as the higher extractor. In this position, it gives you maybe a hundred or so meters to play with, but if you placed your base much lower, such as in my 5x5 challenge at the bottom of this ravine, this is a surprising amount of room to play around with. Now, the last thing at this point that I really wanted to play around with was having a pre-filled container of water feeding from the top into a water network, whether head lift worked with that as well. And I can happily say that yes, as long as there's water in the pipe, this will work, but the container will slowly lose water even if you have all the pipes at the bottom base full. This is because when one extractor turns off for a few seconds, it drains from the top. However, if your lower factories constantly run, then this won't really be an issue. In fact, I only found when an extractor turned itself off did the water drop from the storage tank, and this only happened twice within an hour and a half real time. So if this is the case, then you could get away with having an unconnected water extractor above to run in emergencies to top the container up, 
or another option is to use a train every once in a while to deposit water there to ensure it continues running. But you'll have to be sure that the energy consumption of the train is less than that which you would be using on running an extractor constantly. Oh, and you can actually do this with oil, providing you either create an oil tower at the top of a mountain or on top of a really high factory, or the other option would be to find an oil node relatively high up, such as the one located next to the ravine here in the forest area. Although oil isn't as easily accessible at higher levels, unlike water. But still, it's something to think about and potentially play with. So there you are, guys. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If so, do drop a thumbs up. It does mean a lot to me and it also helps get this guide out to other people who don't know about this. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. And do note, we will be launching our website, satisfactorytips.com, within the next few weeks, which will be a place that brings the community's factory layouts and guides together so keep an eye out for that anyway guys until next time as always thank you so much for watching ciao for now